Hi, welcome to Rajal Nair. Uh, today we are going to discuss about the requirement traceability matrix. Because as you all know, whenever we are working on application development, so being a business analyst, not only gathering the requirements and uh, preparing some documentation or that, that but it is equally important for us to understand about how to trace the requirements because whatever the requirements we have taken, so that requirements, whether the team has developed or not, so that traceability is something essentially important because as there are a lot of requirements will be taken place, so these requirements will be divided basically into two different cases. One is use case and second is test case. Use cases will be prepared for us based upon the understanding what a developer wants because developer wants to prepare some uh, understanding all that stuff, developer wants it. So in regard to that, generally this uh, thing is required. So that is what generally it is needed. So developer wants to know about the requirements, what we have, all that stuff. That is what generally the use cases are, right? So where there will be some preconditions, post conditions, success scenarios, all these things will be available in that. But whereas test cases will be prepared by the testing team, usually which is all part of manual testing. So where whatever the manual operations they do, everything will be under this uh, test cases part so that we have what requirements we have and uh, what must be the expected result because there are two different things one is expected result second is actual result expected result is what customer is expecting actual result is what we are developing so there is a difference between these two so being a business analyst team one should be in a position to understand the requirements well in advance at the same time, we should have a responsibility where we need to trace the requirements between use cases to test cases. Usually this requirement traceability matrix is the one which normally we do in the initial stages of the project. Whenever we start the project, usually testing team will also be included. Involved where we prepare these RTMs, usually different, different uh, application lifecycle management tools like ALM, all that quality center earlier it was called as, now it's called as ALM, application lifecycle management tools, all that. HPLM tools, using that, generally this requirement traceability matrix and all everything will be integrated. So that whatever the requirements we have taken will be compared with the test cases, whether how far, how many use care, how many requirements were addressed so far and what was the balance, everything can be so, can be seen and it will be evident. Now, on that context, here with to have a better understanding over RTM, I'm explaining this on an Excel sheet, right? So because so that you will be understood well in advance. So this is what generally requirement traceability matrix on an Excel sheet. There, here we need to mention the project name, whatever the project name we have and all. So that project name has to be mentioned here. Followed by the project name, uh, the next is about uh, project manager name has to be mentioned, whoever the project manager we have, the details has to be mentioned, followed by the description of the project, whatever the project we are working on. So the description of the project has to be mentioned equally. Apart from that, here we need to mention the ID because each and every requirement will be identified and will be addressed based on the ID number. Because if you remember, whenever we prepare business requirements, documents, functional, non-functional, technical requirements, there will be some ID numbers will be given on that, right? So 1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, something of that sort. So requirement, sub requirement ID, associated requirements. This is how usually this categorization will be made. So the same performer will also be followed when we are preparing RTM, where we have to provide the ID number first. Followed by the ID number, we have to provide the requirement ID, whatever the requirements we are developing. Either this requirement may be a functional requirement, it could be a non-functional requirement or so. So requirement ID number has to be mentioned here. Followed by requirement ID, next is associated requirement ID, because these requirements will have some sub-requirements in between. 
right? So this is where generally associated requirements ID will be addressed. So each and every requirement has to be addressed under RTM, which is what generally we have to see. As I mentioned, it could be a functional, it could be non-functional, it could be security related. So all these requirements, which will be identified based on the ID number, which was given to that. Followed by this, we have to mention about the customer needs, whatever the technical assumptions as well as the customer needs in associating to the requirement. We have taken the ID number for that particular ID number. That customer need has to be mentioned because end of the day, needed as well as the requirement of the customer has to be satisfied. So unless until if you don't have an idea over that, developing would be difficult. So we have to mention about the technical assumptions followed by the customer needs here. Next, this requirement related description has to be mentioned, whatever the description we have. So that description has to be mentioned here equally. Followed by the description, the next is status. Status means is this requirement falls under which category? Is it in progress state? Means is it still under the progress or is it testing is going or no? Or is it completed? So that has to be updated here. This is where generally we need to mentioned, right? So this is how generally this testing, assume that this requirement will be in a form of testing where we have to update equally. Next, what kind of requirement is this? Is this something relating to functional, non-functional or security requirement? Functionalities mean what are the functionality we want to develop? For example, one plus two equal to three. This is a functionality for the addition part is what generally we need. That's what we call it as functional. What is non-functional performance, scalability, of that particular functionality is called non-functional requirement. So functional requirements are important, followed by this, even non-functional requirements are also important. Non-functional requirements explain you about the accuracy as well as the speed performance of that particular task. For example, you have given one plus two. So whenever you press the enter button, immediately you have to get three as final number, right? That should not take more time. Right. So because if you assume that if it is taking more time, what, what do you feel at right? the performance of that particular functionality or the application may not be so accurate. So when we are developing any application or a project for any of the customer, it's not only about functional requirements, performance of the particular functionality of a project is also should be addressed equally. This is where generally it comes under non-functional requirement. Assume that this is a functional requirement. Okay. Now, priority, we have to mention the priority. You know that priorities will be addressed in three different ways. Low level priority, medium and high level priority. So I was mentioned as medium priority. Next, what kind of complexity this particular functionality consists of? Because it depends on the technical complexity that particular functionality is involved. So some requirements will be low in complex to implement medium and high level complex. Assume that I'm just mentioning medium level complexity. Now here we need to mention the people who whom we have assigned this, to whom we have assigned this task that has to be addressed and mentioned here equally. Next architectural design document. This is where, right? So wherever this architectural design documents we have, that architectural design documents will also be mentioned here. Followed by this technical specification, because whatever the technical specification from where because technical specification, let's say that there is a software requirement specification document we have. So in this document, assume that this particular UF, uh, functionality comes under 1.1.2, right? As far as that functionality itself is concerned. So that technical specification has to be updated here equally followed by that. To develop this functionality, what software components and what system components are we required? So these components may vary two things. One is internal components. Second is external components. Internal components means internally how it is connected. Let us say, that, for example, you are developing a point of sale system. So internal components means in, in connect to the point of sale system, there must be an inventory management system should also get connected. So this is where generally we call it as internal components are. External components means, for example, when you want to do billing for a point of sale system, you require some barcode, a scanner, all that. So all these things comes under external components. So system components has to be mentioned. Followed by this, we have to mention about the module, whatever the software module we have. That software module has to be updated equally here. 
what are the software modules we have because project modules will be of separate so that modules has to be mentioned at the same time we need to mention the test case number in which test case number is this belongs to because in the beginning of the session i told you so use case will be prepared so followed by the test case so here whatever the requirement we have taken right so there is a requirement we have taken this requirement somewhere it will be aligned with some test case number which was prepared in a form of test cases by the testing team in automation in for manual testing. So that test case number has to be mentioned here so that we can equalate between these two. So if both are same, usually we, condition, we consider that this test condition is considered as pass. And we feel that uh, that uh, requirement was addressed by the team. That's what we usually feel. Next, tested in which environment? Here we have to mention the environment. In which environment we have tested it? And where we have implemented, in which environment we have implemented. Implemented means coding, all that stuff comes under that. Testing means testing environment. Whether we have verified or not, whether verification was done or not, has to be mentioned. Followed by verification done, we have to update the additional comments. Whatever the additional comments we have. So those additional comments has to be updated here equally. This is how generally a requirement traceability matrix will be prepared by us usually by the testing team, sometimes with the help of business analyst, this testing team will also be prepared this requirement traceability matrix, which is majorly used for us to trace the requirements in regular intervals. This is all about uh, RTM. If you have any questions, if you have any queries in regard to that, please reach out to the contact details, which will be posted in below to this video. Thank you.